Welcome back to the program, everyone. My name is Dr. Dan, and we're going to talk about, well, probably a topic you're not going to like me very much for today. However, I just want to prelude that I am just the messenger, and I think the kids used to say it as, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game. But this is a very common question that I get asked, and there's a new study that's come out that further just really highlights the main point and really is a beautiful illustration about, um, well, about this concept, and so I'm gonna share it with you. Now, generally this question comes up when an individual has been working hard, but they're still struggling to manage and lose weight, and it's either myself or another healthcare provider suggests potentially going on a weight loss medication. And the question is, do I need to stay on this drug for life, or once I reach my goal weight, can I then come off the medication? I then must have what Seems like a heartbreaking conversation sometimes and repeat one of my least favorite taglines. Whatever you do to lose the weight, you must be able to sustain that and maintain that long term to keep the weight off. Now, generally at this point, it's about a 60, 35, 5% split, I would say, and I'm pretty sure that adds up to 100, where everyone kind of has a different thought. So the 60% group is generally saying, nope, not a chance, I'm never gonna go on this medication if I need to take it for life because I don't take medications. The 35% group is kind of in between. They're like, you know what, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. And then finally, a small group of Karens is the last 5% and they generally are telling me to go catch a chicken. And I do apologize to the Karens out there. You know, this really is brought on by Gen Z, I believe. So if we're gonna blame anybody, it's kind of them. And I'm sorry that your name is so targeted at this point in time, but it does add for the comedic value of my videos. Anywho, maintaining weight loss may include staying on a medication if that medication has helped you to lose weight. Now, I will say there is a small caveat, and I would say about 1% of people are able to come off the medication and maintain their weight loss when the drug is no longer there. But these individuals have generally made some really monumental lifestyle changes, like quite large and substantial changes. They found a way to really enjoy them and to sustain them, and ultimately that has helped them in supporting them to maintain the lifestyle changes. Because always remember, these drugs aren't increasing your metabolism, they're just making it easier to execute and engage in the behavior such as smaller portion sizes and such. So I never say something is impossible, but it definitely is more rare in that situation. However, we are getting a better understanding of the psychological aspects of things, and certainly with a lot of my patients, I do support them in helping them to maintain a weight loss long term. And I've had a couple of patients that have been able to come off the medication and sustain that weight loss long term. So let's talk about the study. And this study is on Ozempic because, you know, Ozempic is the new kid on the block. It's currently all the rage. And P.S., if you haven't checked out my previous YouTube video, go and check it out. I do an in-depth dive on Ozempic itself but I'm gonna share with you this new study that just came out. So Rubino et al., you can see the study right here, completed a lovely randomized, what's called a withdrawal study between 2018 and 2020. What they did is they took about 900 individuals that were considered to have obesity, so a BMI greater than 30, or considered to be overweight, a BMI greater than 27, and they had one weight-related comorbidity, such as insulin resistance, hypertension, that sort of thing. And they excluded individuals from this trial that had diabetes. So what they initially did in this study is they took all 900 participants and they put them all on Ozempic. They then titrated the dose up to 2.4 milligrams once per week, which is gonna be the top end dose that Ozempic's likely gonna get approved for for weight management in the very near future. They also provided them a calorie deficit or had them go into a calorie deficit of about 500 calories per day. They also had them doing physical activity at least 150 minutes per week. And each person got one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions one time per month. And they did this for a 20 week period. And then at the end of the 20 weeks, all the participants got split into two groups. One group got to continue on with Ozempic and the lifestyle modifications. And the other group was switched to a placebo and still got the lifestyle interventions, but they no longer were able to take the Ozempic. And this then continued on for another 48 weeks, so almost a year. So during the first 20 weeks, when everybody was taking Ozempic, what they were seeing at the end of the 20 weeks was there was about a 10.6% loss of body weight from baseline, or about 11 kilograms on average per individual. Now that really is quite fantastic results, just over a six month period. The authors also found that at the end of that 20 week period, there was improvements in blood pressure, Pressure, waistline and that sort of thing. So are you ready for the hard part? What happened over the next 
48 weeks between the two groups. And please continue to remember how much you dislike the game and not the messenger, please. So what Rubino and friends found was that over the next 48 weeks after that 20 week run in period, the individuals that stayed on Ozempic lost another 8% of their body weight from baseline or about another seven kilograms or so. And they found that the individuals that were switched to placebo from Ozempic actually gained about 7% of their baseline body weight back or on average about six kilograms per person. And here you can kind of see the nice divergent. We have the nice curve that's going down. Everybody's losing weight in that first 20 week period. And then we see the divergence. We have the group that went on to the placebo and the group that continued on Ozempic. The Ozempic group continued to lose and the placebo group unfortunately gained the weight back. And I know, trust me, I know obesity is a chronic progressive disease, unfortunately. Managing our weight is just not a simple process. It's not a just one and done and we can maintain that weight forever. There is so much more complexity to it. And let's be serious. If it was that easy, we wouldn't have an obesity epidemic and I would probably still be in school trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. The reality is your weight is largely dictated by things that are entirely out of your control. And sometimes in order to control the things that we can't and can control, we need help. And that is totally okay. You are not a failure for needing to go on a medication or to even go as far as bariatric surgery. That doesn't make you a failure by any means. You just need help. And these are just tools in the toolbox, regardless of what the Karens of the world say. All right, that's my spiel. Medications are okay. Surgery is okay. Obesity is a chronic and progressive disease and we need help to manage it. So in the group that continued on Ozempic, about 15.2% of the individuals in that group actually gained some of the weight back. Again, this shows that obesity and managing our weight is a chronic and progressive disease. However, in the placebo group, 82.8% .8 of individuals gained some weight back. That means about 15% of the individuals in this study didn't actually gain any weight back when they came off Ozempic. So that is much larger than the 1% caveat that I mentioned earlier. Now, I don't want you to start getting excited and asking if I've actually caught that chicken yet or not. This data was just looking at some of the tables and I wasn't actually able to see the raw data from this trial in order to interpret, you know, how much weight did these individuals lose initially? What were some of their characteristics? What comorbidities did they have going on? So in reality, it's very tough to kind of be generalizable that, oh, 15% of people can lose the weight with Ozempic and keep the weight off. There's a lot of other factors and things that need to be taken into that. And I just didn't have access to that data to provide that interpretation. For all I know, these individuals only lost one kilogram of weight when they were on Ozempic. And then when they took Ozempic away, they managed to keep that one kilogram of weight off. Now, the authors of this study also didn't mention anything about this small group. So either A, I'm misinterpreting the results, B, it's the fact that it's pharma funded, and I will let you speculate on that one. Or C, it just wasn't part of the study or wasn't the point of the study, so it wasn't worth talking about. Regardless, I'm curious to know a little bit more about this small little group, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has taken notice of it. So hopefully someone much smarter than me has also picked up on it, and they will create a nice analysis, publish it, and then I'll create a video about it. And in reality, this group still would have had to have made some drastic lifestyle behavior modifications in order to change the behaviors that got them to the weight that they were at and ultimately to create new behaviors, new patterns, and a new lifestyle that has allowed them to lose the weight and keep the weight off long term. In conclusion though, obesity is still a chronic disease. And similar to how we manage other chronic diseases such as high blood pressure and diabetes, not only do we need lifestyle changes as our foundation, we also need sometimes medications to help us to manage those conditions. And as with anything, it won't apply to everyone, but it likely will apply to the vast majority. And again, there is nothing wrong with medications or this fact. And the longer that medicine keeps us alive, we're ultimately going to see more and more chronic ailments that need management that are gonna come about if we want to continue living longer and longer, because we certainly aren't dying from the common cold in our 30s anymore, which quite frankly is pretty darn awesome how far we've come in medicine. And always remember, your disease does not define you. It is not who you are. It is a part of you, yes, but it doesn't define who you are as an individual and it shouldn't consume your day-to-day -day life. 
So till next time, my friends, and don't forget to subscribe down below. Check out my other social media channels at the official Dr. Dan. We're on all of the channels, or you can reach out via the website healthcareevolve.ca, and you can either book a free consult with myself, or you can shoot me a message through there. And also drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. And if there's any topics that I haven't covered, please let me know, but have a good one.